right, Pastor Wolf Mueller here at Concordia University, Austin, Texas, Higher Things Retreat. This is Three Minute Parable, so I've got three minutes to explain the parable to you. And this is the parable of the strong man. Jesus tells this parable in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, all a little bit differently, but all quite wonderful. So I got three minutes. You guys ready? Yep. Tell me when. Go. All right, here, let me read it to you first. Jesus says, If Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand but has an end. And then here's the parable. No one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man and then he will plunder his house. Now, this is a tricky parable because Jesus is not giving us instructions on how to be like cat burglars and how to break into people's houses, right? He, that's not obviously not what he's talking about, but what is he talking about then? Jesus says, if a strong man is there, you can't just go into his house and take all this stuff. He's gonna beat you up. You have to first attack the strong man, bind the strong man, tie him up, and then once you've got him hogtied, you can steal all his things. Now, what is he talking about there? Well, the context is key here. Jesus is talking about casting out the devil. And in fact, that's who the strong man is. The strong man is the prince of the power of the air. The strong man is the devil himself. And Jesus is saying that before he's able to rescue people from the strong man, you have to first bind the strong man. Jesus has to first attack the devil. And then once he's attacked the devil, once he's bound up the strong man, now he can go and he can steal all this stuff. And, who, and what is that stuff? The stuff is us. It's you and me. We, we, were, we were held captive by the devil until Jesus comes along and he, and he routes the devil. He destroys the devil. He binds up the devil so that we can be set free. In fact, John 1, 1 John says, for this reason the Son of God was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. And Hebrews tells us that Jesus took on flesh and blood so that through his death, he can destroy the one who has the power of death, that is the devil, and set all those who were afraid of death free. So that Jesus has bound the strong man in order that we might be free. Now this is a really important parable when it comes to understanding Revelation 20. Because Revelation 20 says that Jesus will rule and reign for a thousand years. And how does that thousand years start? With the binding up of the devil and throwing him into the pit. Now you say, Pastor, Ooh, you say, Pastor, it can't have happened yet. I mean, look around. Look, the devil is running wild, right? How can it be that the devil is bound? Well, Hebrews 2.8 is the key to understanding this. It says that Jesus rules and reigns and everything is in subjection under him, but now we don't see it. We see Jesus weak. We see Jesus crucified. We see Jesus humbled. Here's the way I like to think about it. You know, there's a difference between lightning and thunder. You, you see the lightning and then you hear the thunder. Well, with the gospel, it's the opposite. We hear that Jesus has conquered the devil, and then on the last day, we'll see it. We'll see the devil bound, we'll see the devil in chains, we'll see the devil completely under the reign and rule of Jesus, the strong man who rescues us from the devil. Did we do good? Is that, is that okay? If, if you liked that, hit the button that says that you like that. Maybe even subscribe to see more of these. Even give, help us fund this mission of making known the gifts of Christ Jesus to youth and young adults. If you like this video, check out our website, higherthings.org, and check out more content from Higher Things.